Hey guys, it's Sandy. I am going to make freezer meals today. Now I'm doing this for a couple reasons. One, because it's really easy to have food cooked and in the freezer, so whenever you need something quickly, you can have a great dinner on the table quickly, um, something nutritious so you're not running through the drive-through. But also, I've been talking a lot about being prepared, getting your pantry prepared. Well, this is another way to be prepared that if the electric will go out, you already have food cooked that you could warm up. Now granted, these are freezer meals, so they're going in the freezer so we can use them anytime, but if the electric goes out, freezers go out too, so you'd wanna use these up. But uh, the main thing is getting some good healthy food into the freezer, really easy. I'm gonna make a breakfast oatmeal bake, which is really good, very nutritious. I'm also going to make some sloppy joes. I'm gonna fry up some sausage and put it in the freezer to use for omelets or um, different things, but also I'm gonna use part of that sausage and make a soup. So I'm also gonna make a soup and put that in the freezer too. It is a um, sausage lentil soup. It is delicious. It's the Carabas copycat soup, it's so good. So come along with me. Freezer meals make life easier, so that's why I wanna do this. If you'll hit that like button, it'll really help me, and I'll see you in the video. First, you need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then grease your pan. Make sure and get up on the sides because it will stick. You're gonna need a dozen eggs, rolled oats, apples, I'm using Honeycrisp, and I'm gonna put walnuts in mine, that's optional. You're gonna need cinnamon, applesauce, milk, I'm using almond milk, but you can use regular cow's milk, brown sugar, butter, and then what I didn't show is vanilla and salt that I'll be putting into this. So first you just want to break all of your eggs into the dish. Instead of using a bowl when trying to mix things in there, just put it all into this um, dish. No sense in dirtying another bowl. So just put all your eggs in. And then add one teaspoon of salt. This is pink Himalayan salt. You can use whatever kind of salt you have. And then just start beating all the eggs together. Add in two cups of milk, whatever kind of milk you're using. And you can see I just dropped my fork down in there, so I gotta get my fork out of there and beat this up just to mix all of the ingredients so far together. To this, you're gonna add three teaspoons of ground cinnamon. If you don't really like cinnamon, just add two teaspoons, but I really like it. Two cups of applesauce. four cups of rolled oats. Now make sure they're rolled oats and that you didn't buy the quick cooking oats because you need the rolled kind. Four cups or whatever spills out, just like I did. It's not a big deal. Need one teaspoon of vanilla. You know if you use the cap, that is actually one teaspoon, so you don't even have to measure, just use a cap. One fourth cup of brown sugar. You saw that I pressed it into the measuring cup and then put it in my hand to break it up into the pan and then just mix that in. Now, if you're someone that's trying to cut down on sugar, you could just use two tablespoons of sugar instead. Um, I like the brown sugar. I think that it gives it a lot of flavor, so I want that in. But you'll also put a little bit of brown sugar on the top just to make it a little bit crispy on the top. So just be aware of that. Now you're just gonna mix all of this up and you know that cinnamon is not water soluble so it takes a minute to get the cinnamon all mixed in. And then you're just gonna cut up your apples and put in two cups of diced apples. Now you can be as creative as you want to be. I'm doing apples and cinnamon, but you could do blueberries, you could do strawberries, you could be, um, do bananas and peanut butter maybe. I'm doing apples with walnuts in it because I like the walnuts too. But you can just be as creative as you want to be and put whatever you want into this um, oatmeal bake. 
Now just mix it up really good. Sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on the top, put some pats of butter on here, and then you're gonna put this into the oven for at 350 degrees for an hour and 10 minutes is how long I did mine. I am gonna link the recipe below. It says an hour and 15 minutes in the recipe, but you want it until it's firm, but you do not wanna overcook it. Okay, so now that the oatmeal is in the oven, I'm going to make up two more um, things. I'm going to brown this, no, yeah, brown the ground beef because I'm going to make sloppy joes to put in the freezer. And I'm going to brown, um, I actually have three packages of this. I'm gonna brown some sausage because I want some in the freezer that I can just get out, like to put into a quiche or a soup. And then my other one I actually am going to put into a soup I wanna show you. It's gonna be so good. So I'm gonna do these at the same time so that they are done quicker. So while I have the meat warming up, I go over and start cutting up some peppers and half of a great big onion that I'm gonna put into the sloppy joes. And then I need to just keep checking on the meat and just moving it around so that it browns evenly. I had to put on my apron because I'm notorious for having stuff splash on me. I love this one. My dad got it for me whenever he visited Russia on a missionary trip. So I just like wearing it also, but it does keep my clothes clean. I have the onions and the peppers cut up so I can put into the sloppy joe. It just adds a lot more flavor, but also some vegetables into it. I just need to make a space in here so that I can have a place to saute them. And I just put them right into the middle and get them going. The sausage is cooked, so I'm gonna pour off the grease and set that aside. Now put some olive oil in the pot for the Carrabba's sausage and lentil copycat soup. You'll need garlic, carrot, celery, zucchini, and onions all diced up, and then put that into your pot so they can start sauteing. Let these saute for about five minutes to soften them and also start to bring out the flavors. And then I'm gonna rinse off my lentils. Um, it says one and a half cups for the recipe and I'm gonna link the recipe below, but I'm gonna use one cup of lentils instead. I think that's plenty. I do like to wash my rice, my beans before I ever use them. So I'm just gonna rinse these off really good. Now to get our sloppy joe made, you'll need one tablespoon of tomato paste, one third cup of water, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of yellow mustard, three fourths teaspoon of chili powder. Now if you have little ones and you don't want that chili powder, then just leave out that spice. A half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, a half a teaspoon of uh, salt, and then a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Again, if you need to keep it out, just do. Then I remembered, oh yeah, I have more than one pound of ground beef and here I have two, so I just had to repeat everything I just put in. Then the recipe calls for two thirds cup of ketchup, so I did that twice. And now I am just stirring it all together so these flavors can just men meld, <laughs> melt together and then I'm just gonna let it simmer on the stove top just so it can cook down and not be runny and also um, just for the flavor. Now I'm gonna get to my soup. So what I had done is put in chicken broth that I had in the freezer, six cups, so I needed to put that in and let it melt down. So now it has melted down. I'm adding my tomatoes to it. I put in one can of Rotel and one can of regular diced tomatoes. I will link the recipe below. Now I'm putting in my rinsed lentils, one teaspoon of salt, and then pepper to taste, two teaspoons of dried oregano. Usually I'm not a huge oregano fan, but you don't taste it in this soup, and it's really important to have in the soup for the flavor. Now you can use fresh or dried parsley and basil. I'm using dried, so two tablespoons of dried parsley and one tablespoon of dried basil. Now to keep working on the sloppy joe, just to keep the flavors moving around and that it doesn't stick and burn, I just wanted to move that around. And now I'm gonna put that pork sausage that I had fried up earlier. I did three packs, so I'm, I'm eyeballing it and using about one in the soup. 
Now you want to get the soup boiling, mix it together, get all those flavors mixed up, and then once it's boiling, put the lid on it and cook it for an hour covered on simmering though. So let your oven down to simmering. This soup is absolutely delicious. You're gonna love it. The oatmeal bake is finished cooking. You can see it's a little bit spongy. It's not undercooked and it's not overcooked. It's perfect. Now this was what I said about the tomato paste. I put it out in tablespoons, then I will freeze this. Once they're frozen, I will take these, put them in a baggie, and then stick them in a freezer bag, and then I have the perfect um, amount already measured out, and then I'm not wasting that whole can of tomato paste. And then here, the soup after an hour, hour and 10 minutes, it is done, it is delicious, it's perfect. I'm gonna let it cool down. We're gonna eat half of this for dinner tonight and the other half I'm going to stick into the freezer bag and put it in the freezer. So when I go to use this, I will just take, a, take it out the night before, but if I forget, I'll just take the whole block of frozen soup and put it into the pan and let it just melt into the pan and warm up on dinner night. The best way to serve this soup is with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese right on top. I took the oatmeal bake and I um, cut it into bars that I would use for breakfast. That was amounts. I cut 12 out of the 13 by 9 pan. And then I just put them on the cooling rack to cool so that I would be able to put them into the freezer and the refrigerator. Once these were cooled down, I could put it in the freezer bag. So I have the sloppy joes ready, and then I have the sausage in another bag. And then I wrote on there that could be used for omelets or in spaghetti and soup and breakfast burritos. That way, if I'm not the only one pulling out of the freezer, um, one of my kids or Mac would know also. I've got the soup laid out here. Now, I freeze my stuff laying down like this so it stacks easily in the freezer. I don't stack it all together at once and then expect it to freeze, but I kind of spread it out and let it freeze and then I stack it. Here's the oatmeal breakfast bars. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for this week, but the rest of it is going into the freezer and then I'll just take out like maybe three at a time for the week and or four at a time, whatever I want, and put it in the refrigerator and let it thaw out and then I'll just warm it up in the microwave. This is such an easy way to make multiple meals all at once and have simple, healthy meals in the freezer for whenever you need to pull them out. Um, it's easy if it's beginning of the week to pull out maybe two or three things at a time, let it sit in the refrigerator and just start thawing out so that whenever you're ready to cook it, it's already thawed out. All right, I hope this was helpful. Will you please hit that like button below? And until next time, I'm out.